One of the most important skills when it comes to Excel formulas is understanding and using Excel reference styles. There are six reference styles in Excel. Those are A1, $A, $1, A, $1, $A1, table column and at the rate column styles. In this video, let me explain these six concepts so that you can become more confident when it comes to using these in your Excel formulas. Let's jump in. Let's say you have a number in the cell C3 100 and in the next cell D3 you just want to print twice that amount. You could use the formula equal to C3 times 2 and this of course will be 200. While we think we asked Excel to multiply C3 by 2, what Excel really hears at this point is take the value in one cell to the left and multiply it with 2. Let's prove that by first typing another value here, let's say 300. Now notice what happens when I copy Ctrl C and paste this formula Ctrl V. It automatically adjusts to 600 because Excel heard one cell to the left times 2. This style of referencing where we are asking Excel to do an operation one cell to the left or one cell above relative to the current position of the formula is called relative references. So C3 here or G6 here is a relative reference. What if you want to lock the reference so that you always multiply with C3? You could do this by adding a dollar in the front of C and in the front of 3. So C3 becomes dollar C dollar 3. The result here will not change but when you control C the formula and paste it somewhere else control V you can see that even here it is multiplying with C3. This style of referencing is called absolute references because it is absolutely locked to C3 and no matter where you copy paste your formulas it will always be on C3. Understanding how various styles of references work is the cornerstone to writing and developing good Excel formulas. So let us practice this particular concept alone once again with a simple clinic appointment tracker information here. Let us say you are looking at the number of appointments that are booked on 5th of September 2021 here, 29 appointments, 6 cancellation and 3 walk-ins and you want to calculate total patients. The total patients would be booked appointments plus walk-ins minus cancellations. So we have served 26 patients on that day. The cancellation percentage is number of cancellations as against total bookings, 21% cancellations. Now because these formulas are all relative, if there is some additional days available here, the formulas will automatically work. Let's test this. So now that we have some more information for the other days of the week, if you select these two cells, Control C and select this entire range, Control V, you'll notice that Excel has automatically adjusted the references and calculated total patients for each of the days as well as the cancellation percentages for each of the days. Even though there is seven days worth of data, we only have to write one set of formulas and copy paste. That is the beauty of Excel cell references. If you know how to use them well, you can get really a lot of mileage out of them. Let us examine few more variations of these references and how to apply them for business problems. Here I have got some sales data and based on the amount of sale a person has done, we would like to offer them either 2%, 3% or 5% bonus. So your manager wants to know what would be the bonus amounts for each of these options so that they can make a decision. We could write three different formulas or we could use the concept of mixed references to write a single formula and copy paste so that it will work in all three situations. So the formula would be like this amount times bonus option. Now notice that this formula will work for this particular cell and it will tell you that in this situation the bonus should be $74. But if I control C and control V here, 
I will not get the correct amount. The reason for that is this new formula refers to one cell to the left, one cell above and then doesn't work anymore. So we need to change our referencing style now. In this situation, what we would like to do is irrespective of where the formula is copy pasted, we would always like to refer the amount in column E. So we shall place a dollar in the front of E. Likewise, irrespective of where the formula is placed, we would always like to refer to the bonus percentage that is in row number four. So we will lock the row option for that part with a dollar in the front. So whenever you notice a dollar, essentially you're telling Excel that you want to lock that portion. Now it will say 74 here, but when I copy and paste it here, I will get 110 and I will get 184. And when you drag this formula down, you will get bonus for all combinations with a single formula. Now here is an extra bonus trick for you. You know how we are adding the dollar manually? You could use Excel keyboard shortcut F4 to automatically place the dollar for you. Locate the reference where you want to place the dollar. So for example, E5, I want to change and press the F4 key and Excel will cycle through various dollar options. So it will say dollar E, dollar five, E dollar five, dollar E five, and then finally E five. Let us understand the concept of absolute reference once more with the context of bonus. This time you don't want to set up three different columns. You want to control the bonus amount in a cell and print all the bonus values here. So this time the amount times bonus will always be in D3. So we can select that and make it an absolute reference. To do that, type D3 and then press F4 key and it will change to $D$3. And now when you fill this down, you'll get all the values at 5% bonus. But if I change this to 10%, I'll see all my bonus values changed. 2%, I will see new bonus values as well. Now that we understand the four main styles of referencing, that is A1, dollar $A, dollar $1, dollar $A1, and A, dollar $1, let us understand how to use the references in a range so that you can calculate some extra things. For this purpose, I want to calculate the running total of amounts. So the running total of amount is in this row, it is 3682, but in this particular row, it will be the total of these two. So we can say sum, the starting point is E6. Coincidentally, the ending point is also E6, but the end point needs to change as you drag this down, whereas starting point need to be always on E6. So if I write this formula and press enter, I'll simply get 3682. And when I drag it down, I'll get the relevant amount. Whereas here, I don't want this from E7 to E7. I want this bit to be E6 to E7. So what we will do is we'll go to the first part of the sum, select the E6 bit and press F4 to make it an absolute reference. Notice what we are doing here. We're saying $E, $6, and then the end point will be E6. It will be 3682 here, but now when you drag this down, it will change the referencing so that it will always refer to the starting point and then end here. This is a powerful way to calculate running totals for your values. The final style of referencing that you need to learn are the structural references. Within Excel, you can use data that is in a cell or in a table. So I have got our sales data here. This time I'm going to turn this into a table. So we'll go to insert, click on table. You can also press control T to create a table. And now we have a table with our data. Now let's calculate bonus based on a cell input value. So we'll say bonus. So here we will say, amount times bonus percentage. Now earlier when we pick a cell, we would get the cell address as a reference, but within a table, you will get this at the rate structure, which simply means the amount value in this particular row of the table. So it will be 3682 here, but it will be 8617 here. And then that is the bonus percentage. We will make that as an absolute reference. And when you press enter, the formula gets copied down all the way. So using this at the rate structure, we can refer to table cell values. Let's do this with one more example, which is amount plus bonus. This would be at the rate amount plus at the rate bonus. Now, what if I want to calculate what is the total bonus? So I can print the total bonus on the top here. You can say sum of, and then let's just select the bonus column in the table. So it will become table two bonus. 
table two because the name of this table is table two and then that will be the value. We can change the table name to something more friendly. To do that, select any cell within the table, go to table design and from here, let's name this table as sales. So now our formula reads sum of sales bonus. Now that you are familiar with the reference styles, you may want to learn some of the important formulas in Excel. Here is my video on top 10 Excel formulas. Check it out. Excel also has many other powerful features that do not require writing a single formula. If you want to explore some of those, check out my video on top 10 awesome things that you could do without writing a single formula. Both of these videos are really good and they will give you so much more knowledge and detail on how to use Excel. I wish you all the best. Bye-bye.